So hello dear students. Uh, you know that the practical exams, chemistry will be held and they are going on in fact now. And since there is a reasonably a big gap between your practicals and your practical exams, so we thought that we would upload this video of the experiment which you are going to do in the laboratory for the exams so that you can refer to this video before you come to the lab and gain a level of confidence when you do the experiment. <coughs> First, in your uh, lab, the experiment which is set for the titration, the analytical, chem analytical chemistry part is the estimation of iron in the given FA solution by using potassium dichromate standard. The first step of the experiment is to prepare the standard solution of potassium dichromate. And I will show you how to prepare correctly the standard solution of potassium dichromate. For this, in the lab, you will be supplied with a bottle which already contains pre-weighed amount of potassium dichromate. This bottle should be weighed first. And the weight of the weight of the bottle plus potassium dichromate should be noted and written in your in your booklet in the examination mm -hmm. and then okay. transfer the given crystals from the bottle into your standard flask and while transferring after you pour the solid into the flask you just gently tap two or three times so that the crystals fall into the flask now you take the weight of the empty bottle which i think is given here so the weight of the potassium dichromate you have taken will be what the weight of the empty bottle plus crystal w1 minus only the weight of the empty bottle w2 so w1 minus w2 will give you the weight of the dichromate crystals you have taken now you have to calculate the normality of the solution for the weight of the crystal you have taken not for the weight that was given inside which you will never come to know instead it is always w2 minus w1 weight which you have taken should be used for the calculation in your uh, ex experiment <clears throat> now once your crystals are transferred into the flask the next step is actually the important crucial step of making up the solution to the correct volume for that you pour slowly the water over the walls of the tube slowly so that all the crystals will go into the flask you have to repeat this two or three times with small portions of water and by washing it over or by passing the water over the walls of the flask slowly. Now, once you are sure that the crystals are not sticking in the funnel, you can start pouring the water up to the neck of the flask. Up to the neck of the flask. Please note that you should never pour water up to the mark instead always up to the neck or even to a lower level than the neck it also does okay now you see you can notice the water level it is not up to the mark which is here instead there is a gap you can stopper it now and then dissolve the crystal You see, and since the potassium dichromate crystals are very soluble in water, it shouldn't be very difficult to dissolve them, it's quite easy. You can just shake this, agitate this four or five times, and then let it sit. You can see there is still a volume gap, so this is not at the full standard solution. When will this become a standard solution? When you will make it up to the mark. Now, how to fill the remaining volume? That has to be done very carefully, in fact, through a pipette. And use a 10 ml or a 25 ml pipette for this.
take about half the volume inside the pipette and then take the flask up to your eye level slowly open the pipette so that the water gently comes down over the wall and then goes up to the mark once it comes up to the mark you stop the pipette now your solution is ready but it is not homogeneous still stop it again and then make it homogeneous once okay can you see now it is almost up to the mark now this is the step that's the first step where you are going to make ready your standard potassium dichromate solution calculate the normality of this using the weight you have taken so this will form the constitute the first step of the titration experiment i will demonstrate you the second step of the experiment which is actually the titration step <clears throat> for which you have to take potassium dichromate in the burette ferrous ammonium sulfate fa solution in the conical flask add the indicator and do the titration <clears throat> to fill the solution inside a burette we should always first place the funnel above it and then start pouring the solution from your standard flask slowly and try to fill it up to 0 ml mark 0 ml mark in fact the full volume should be filled up okay so it is quite possible that while pouring the solution the volume can go over the final mark now you can adjust the mark adjust the meniscus actually exactly to zero now once it is quite close to zero almost close to zero you have to go to the thing bring the burette hold the burette to your eye level and drop wise the solution should be run down and accurately the mark should be adjusted the lower meniscus for dilute solutions should always be taken as your reference okay in the conical flask 25 ml of fas pip it out always adjust a pipette to the given mark bring the pipette to your eye level slowly and please note that we have seen students using thumbs and sometimes even little fingers to adjust the pipette don't never do it always use your four finger to control the pipette okay see okay. now transfer the solution into your conical flask and what is the solution i am using now in the pipette ferrous ammonium sulfate of fas and this is the unknown solution which will be provided to you in the lab what do you mean by unknown solution whose normality is not not known to us i am going to determine the normality of fas that is the question of the experiment see incline the conical flask and just touch the pipette to the bottom of the conical flask only once so the residual volume will come down the indicator is diphenylamine i think before that we should add Sulfuric acid. acid buffer. Mixture. Acid mixture buffer. What's the one? Five. Five ml. 
as a mixture of a fireman to the conical class whenever you add a fresh solution always make it a habit that you are going to swirl it for some time so that they become homogeneous and then add two drops of two or three drops of indicator diphenyl yes so now you can start that iteration with make sure just before the start of the titration once again that the initial burette reading should be noted down in your observation i know you have already adjusted it to zero but whenever you start the titration just then the initial burette reading should be noted down because it is quite it is always possible that in the meanwhile while you are not titrating the burettes can leak or drip and the initial burette reading would change so just when you start the titration begin the titration take the initial period in this case now it is zero but always it need not be zero now it is zero okay and you keep a white background so that the color change would be distinctly visible and start transferring the burette solution into the conical flask slowly and keep a you now track the color change as the end point nearers the color of the solution forms and remains sometimes but when you swirl it it does disappears only at the end point the color will permanently appear see the way a burette has to be controlled hold the conical flask in your right hand and rotate the burette should be held in your left hand and the control should be proper while you do the titration never watch the burette your full focus should be there only on the conical flask you should be you know anticipating the color change and if you are good at it you should be able to bring about the color change in just one drop of the burette solution don't look at the burette at all if your titration technique is proper automatically your burette reading will be accurate you can see now it is taking some time for the blue color to disappear can you see that the blue color is forming and disappearing so it suggests that end point is very near at this point you can stop the titration swift swirlings and then start adding drop wise burette solution and then stop because tiny drops cannot be controlled with your left hand in the way i did before using both hands take the control of the burette yeah i think in the next drop the color change would happen yes the color has to be permanent so i think one more drop is required yes can you see a distinct blue color now 
appearing and staying for a long time that means a permanent color changes happened and and i think you noticed that this color change happened after addition of one drop of the burette solution so in this way an accurate titration should be executed now once you are satisfied with the color change you decide the end point is is uh, achieved take the final burette reading to take the final burette reading remove the burette from the stand and then bring it again to your eye level and now in this case it is 20.5 again the lower meniscus is our reference 20.5 once you do this your first trial is over repeat the trial now for concordant values however for the next trial discard this solution repeat the steps again take 25 ml of fas again add the acid buffer diphenylamine indicator and do the titration however this time uh, what do you think should the volume be again adjusted to zero no you can start with an initial burette reading as the, as it is for example 25 20.5 was the final burette reading for my previous trial this will be my initial burette reading for the next trial so you can continue in this way and concordant value should be obtained once you know the volume you use your n1 v1 formula is equal to n1 v1 is equal to n2 v2 formula where n1 v1 is the normality of the fas normality of fas is unknown to you so n1 is equal to n2 v2 divided by v1 n2 is the normality of the potassium dichromate which you have calculated in your step 1 please use only that normality and volume of the potassium dichromate is your burette reading volume of fas was 25 ml so that would provide you the normality of fas